Aloha and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest artist today was born in Portland, Oregon and raised in California. She studied playing piano at the age of four and at the age of 15 won the Piano State Championship at the Bella Barto Festival. She is a graduate of University of Southern California with a degree in jazz studies and was named the most outstanding jazz student. She has worked in the studio with Michael Bublé and has toured and performed around the world with various artists to include The Temptations, Michael Bolton, Jeff Lorber, Norman Brown, Paul Brown, Gerald Albright, Huge Group, and the list goes on. I am so happy to have this amazing and beautiful artist on the show today. Please welcome Jesse J to the show. Aloha, Jesse. How are you? Aloha, Gwen. I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm excited to be going to Hawaii soon. And we can't wait to have you. You know, the first time I saw you and met you, I think I took a picture with you too, was when you came over here years ago with um, Michael Polo. Yes. And I've yes. been to other festivals where I've seen you as well. And for the viewing audience, if you have not seen or heard Jesse J play, you have to come see her, especially if you are here in Hawaii at the Blue Note Hawaii. Now, Jesse, how did you get into playing music? What started you? Who started? Well, actually, my parents uh, wanted me to take piano lessons, and I really fell in love with music right at an early age. As you mentioned, I was four years old and I was studying piano. And then in the third grade, I was time to join the elementary school band. So they don't have pianos in the band, uh, but mm -hmm. they did offer me a variety of woodwind or brass instruments. And originally I wanted to play the flute because I thought it was a, like shiny and beautiful. And I, was, oh, I could really picture myself playing this instrument, but already too many people had signed up for that instrument. So the band director asked me if I would consider playing the alto saxophone instead. And I said yes, because I really wanted to be in the band. So I joined the band on the alto saxophone, and that's how I started my jazz journey. Wow, you really answered the question, because my next question to you was going to be, how did you switch from piano to saxophone? And you definitely answered mm -hmm. uh, that question. Now, one piece of information, your name, Jesse J. Your original name is now, if I butcher your name, Jesse, I am so sorry. Your original, your original mm -hmm. name is Jessica Arilano? That's correct. Yes, you did very well. Now, what made you switch? How did you come up with your stage name of Jesse J? Because I love it. Oh, thank you. Well, when I first got started, Paul Brown was producing my, my brand new album called Tequila Moon. This is way back in 2006. And uh, he had mentioned, you know, Jessica Ariano, although it's a great name, it's really hard for people to spell because the two L's, as you know, are silent in Spanish. <laughs> and also it would be hard for people to remember it and Google it and get the website. And, and I could see where he's coming from. And he explained to me that a lot of people have stage names like Boney James, right? Huge Groove. Mm -hmm. All of yep. these people have different names for the stage, and it kind of goes with the persona. Okay, now you're this person. When you're on stage, you're this, and when you're at home, mm -hmm. you're that. And it kind of brings in this whole new character. So uh, I was on board with having a stage name, and Jesse is actually a nickname that I've had since I was really little. So it was perfect to have Jesse there. And then the J stands for jazz. So, you know, Jesse oh. Jazz, Jesse J. Oh, wow. Okay. See, I've always wanted to know what the J stands for. You just answered my question today. <laughs> um, after college, you went to University of Southern California. And I read after college, you worked with uh, Michael Buble. Buble? That's correct. Yes. A friend of mine from USC uh, was putting together some music for his Christmas album. And USC and LA is really well known, has a lot of connections. So David Foster called one of my great friends, Jason Goldman to start working on some music for a new album. And I played Barry on that session. It was a lot of fun and I was getting my feet wet. I had been done a lot of live gigs, a lot of sessions, but this was my first big, big session. So it was pretty cool to be in the studio with everybody. That must be fun right out of college, even though you were pretty much started young in music, but right out of college playing with uh, Mr. Buble, that must have been awesome and others. Thank you, it was a blast. And you've toured with so many people. What is your most memorable 
I should say, your most memorable story of maybe a show that you've done? Oh, that's a good question as well. So I think one of the most memorable shows for me was in 2007 when I performed Tequila Moon at the Catalina Jazz Tracks Festival in Avalon, California. That always has a special place in my heart because it was the first time I played it in front of a live audience because I had recorded it first. So mm -hmm. no one had heard the song before. And it was my debut performance over there at the Catalina Jazz Tracks Festival. I had just signed a record deal. It was kind of like all the stars were aligned and it was a perfect evening. I loved it so much. Well, we're going to talk about that later, but Tequila Moon is, that is my favorite. That is my all time <laughs> favorite <laughs> song. That is just my all time. I love it. Love it. Love it. Now, there are a lot of people that out there that play saxophone. Okay. Everybody has their unique. What sets you apart from other saxophones? Well, I think one of the obvious differences is that I'm a Latina, so I'm Mexican-American, and I'm also a woman. So in my music, you hear a lot of my Latin heritage, as yeah. well as um, a lot of sensuality, because I feel like women are very sensitive people, and they're very highly emotional, and I have those elements in my music as well. And then most recently, becoming a mom of two boys, that brings a whole other element into my music and compositions. So that brings a big part of it as well. Wow, congratulations. I mean, they had two boys, that's awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. Now, what is your, of course you play a lot, you play a lot of different music, but what is your process for writing music? For writing music, I try to tell a story from beginning to end. So a lot of the songs that you hear are based on a situation, whether it's something that I experience or an imaginary scenario. Um, but yeah, Tequila Moon, like you mentioned, is one of your favorite songs to listen to. It's really yes. about having a good time with your friends underneath the moon at night. So just imagine you're just like having a sip of tequila, a bunch of friends, campfire, you know, at the beach, maybe somewhere in Mexico, like very Latin tropical place. So those elements are in the music and you're kind of just enjoying the night yeah that's a really upbeat tune i actually played it yesterday on my radio show and got plenty of feedback and i'm like that's an old tune but it's 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 awesome thank you amazing um now for our saxophone players out there because i had some i told somebody that i was interviewing you that plays sax and they wanted to know what brand of saxophone first of all how many saxophones do you have first of all and second of all, what brand of saxophone and reeds? Sure. Well, I have a lot of saxophones. I have two of each one. So two altos, two tenors, two baritones, and two soprano saxophones. I basically have a backup in case something happens and I need a new one right away. And then for me right now, for this interview, I'm playing a Selmer Super Action 80 Series 2 with the Autolink 7-star mouthpiece a Selmer ligature, and a Diodario size two and a half plastic cover reed. So that's my go-to setup. I've never changed it. It's the only thing that I've ever played because I love it. Speaking of saxophones, will you be able to just to play us just a little bit of something? Give the people here in Hawaii what to expect when you come to Blue Note Hawaii in May. Yes, I would love to. <laughs> Now that was just a tidbit. That was just a tidbit. Everyone, she really performs. When she's on stage, it's an all-out show. And you don't want to, you don't want to to um to miss that. Now for um you there's a lot of artists out there and I ask this of every artist because every artist has has come up differently I should say or has gotten into the music industry differently. What advice would you give a new artist that's coming into the industry? Well, I think that being versatile is really important. And that's what I tell people, just 
be able to play more than one instrument. So I play alto, tenor, berry, soprano, flute, clarinet, piano, guitar, and I sing. And um, I write music, and now I record an engineer as well at home. I've been recording music from home. So it's not like you're just one thing, like, oh, I'm just going to play tenor sax and rock and roll music, and that's it. Because that really doesn't work. You have to be able to play bluegrass, Americana music, Latin right. music, jazz, R&B, soul, funk, like classical, everything, you name it. Just be very versatile as much as you can. And then be virtuosic. Be the best that you can be for yourself. And then um, just be vulnerable. So you have to take chances and able to get to where you want to be. There's a lot of sacrifice that comes with that, a lot of practicing and a lot of hard work. But I think if that's your dream and ultimately what you want to do, then it is possible. Now, you spoke of um, being able to play different genres of music, right? I think I know what you're going to say, but I want you to tell me. What is your favorite genre of music to play? Well, I love playing jazz because <laughs> every time you play it, it's different. Mm -hmm. The improvisation aspect and then the live performance aspect and then recording with a band live is also one of my favorite things in the world to do. You get the interaction of all the musicians together. So um, there's just a lot of wonderful things about jazz music as well as the rich history it has in America. And then... Um, yeah, I just love straight ahead as well as contemporary jazz and, of course, more like Latin pop jazz also. Now, we talked about your your um, album, which was your first album, Tequila Moon, right? Yes. Um, your latest album, or if you're coming out with one, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Well, my latest album is called Blue. I released it in 2022. In an album that features music from the 1960s and 70s, reminiscent of Herbie Hancock, a little bit of um, Dexter Gordon in there, some Ray Charles. It has a lot of elements of the blues as well, the 12 bar blues. And they're all original compositions. I recorded it during the pandemic when everything was shut down and closed. And then more recently, and Mother's Day on May 10th, I'm gonna be releasing a new album called Children's Album. And this is a song that I wrote for my two sons. I have two boys, a three-year-old and a five-year-old, Mateo and David. And they're lullabies that I wrote for them when they're babies. And I decided to make it an album. And I'm releasing it and having a CD release party as well at Spaghettini in Seal Beach, California on May 12th. Oh, so you, you heard that, everyone. If you're going to be in California, stop by and see her. May 12th, right? Correct, yes. May 12th. For the for um, the opening. Now here's a good question. I love this question too. You have collaborated and worked with so many people. Who would you like? Who and who would be your if you haven't already done it? Who would be your dream collaboration? Actually, I would love to perform with Carlos Santana. He's always been someone that I've looked up to musically and the history that he has within the music genre is amazing. So that's definitely on my to-do list. And I can actually see you and him coming. I can actually, yeah. that would be fire. I would oh, have to thanks. come from Hawaii to come to that show. For, Thank you. <laughs> for real. <laughs> um, Another question that I have, and this is more geared to music in the school. So I don't know how it is in California, but I do know on the mainland. Because um, I grew up playing music, too. I grew up playing the flute and clarinet oh. and all of that. Right? Wow. So um, on the mainland, they are now starting to take the music out of the school. Okay? Because of funding. What is your thought on that? And what do you think could possibly be done to, to keep the music in the school? Because I think children, I think kids need that art aspect. So what definitely. do you think possibly could be done? Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think music is just so vital to our communities. Kids need an outlet to be able to play how they feel. Because a lot of times children cannot express themselves, but in music they can. In sports, they can, in art and painting and things like this where they can be free. I think all of these creative uh, outlets need to be there for our children. So um, I don't know what the answer is. I know a lot of it has to do with funding 
and that comes from the government. But if you were to ask me personally, I think that music should be really esteemed and held high in every school, and there should definitely be a budget for it. Awesome. Now, what do you, you travel so much, I'm sure. You, you're, you're a mother, you travel um, because of work. When you have spare time, what do you like to do in your spare time? I'm actually an avid swimmer. So something that I like to do almost every day is go swimming for about an hour. I do lap swim. And yeah, that's why I also love Hawaii. I was going to say. <laughs> I love the ocean. I love the pools in Hawaii and the beach and everything. It's so wonderful. So I can't wait to go and relax on the sand and do an ocean swim while I'm there. Nice. Well, I'm pretty sure I'll see you out there on the, on the beach somewhere, you know, <laughs> where, where, wherever, wherever you're staying. Um, where can people, because we're winding down a little bit, where can people go to find your music? My music is available anywhere. If you stream on Apple Music, Spotify, or if you're on iTunes, you can also buy music, physical copies on my website, jessiej.com. I have albums for sale there on the store page. You can get um, t-shirts and hats as well. And it's a lot of, you know, a lot of memorabilia that fans like to get memories from shows that they've been to. But I do have a total of 10 albums. So it's been quite a journey over the last 16 years. And I listen to a lot of music now streaming, so I'm sure people can easily find it anywhere on your phone, in the car, and also on the radio, however you listen to music. Nice. Now you heard that. What shows, and I know I want you to mention it, I want you to mention this one, because you've mentioned it already. What other shows do you have coming up? Well, on May 30th, I'll be at the Blue Note in Honolulu, Hawaii. So it's my debut at the club there. I'm very excited. I've played at other Blue Notes before, but this is the first time I've been at the Honolulu Club. And um, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be totally amazing. And I hope that you can all join us. Two shows, um, so back-to-back -back shows. And I'd love to say hello and meet everyone personally as well. So you hear that, everyone. Here in Hawaii, Miss Jessie J is going to be at Blue Note Hawaii. Two shows. There's no excuse, but it's early now, so you can still get your tickets and come see this beautiful saxophonist um, on stage. Well, Jesse, our time is is running out. I thank you so much for for being here. I've always wanted to interview, so I'm happy <laughs> that I got to that I that I got to interview. interview thank you. Today. And thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here, Gwen, and you're amazing. I love your spirit and how you just keep putting jazz in the forefront and bringing it to everyone in Hawaii and around the world. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you. And I will definitely see you at Blue Note for Ooh. sure. Yes. <laughs> I will be there front row, front row. I will be there. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. To my viewers, this is our last show here on Think Tech Hawaii, the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. However, I want to thank Think Tech Hawaii for all the years of being here on this forum. Especially, I had Jesse J for my last show here on this forum. Thank you so much, Think Tech. Thank you so much to my viewers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this. Again, thank you. Look for me on June 1st on another forum. And until then, aloha. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th.
we will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.